Hey boys and girls, we're on the June 2012 Regents in Physics for New York State. And we're on page 10. I think we'll get the first couple of questions uh, done in this video. Let's see. Um, question 51 deals with, 51 through 53, deals with um, a student produces various elongations of the spring by applying a series of forces to the spring. This is a uh, required lab in New York State Regents. Taking a little spring and adding weights to it. Not a hard one, but uh, we all do it. A lot of fun. Okay, here we go. We add a force, and we stretch a spring. Force versus elongation. All right, we got it. So now determine the spring constant. Spring constant. I can't remember spring constant. It was at the beginning of the year. I mean, well, around Christmas time anyway. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to go look over here for spring constant. And, um, oh, there it is, K. It says K is spring constant. So let's go find some stuff that have K in it. And then right here, I've got force on a spring is equal to Kx, and potential energy spring is 1 half Kx squared. Well, I've got force on a spring, and X is, uh, right here, it tells me it's the change in spring length. So I think that equation will do it. If uh, force on a spring is equal to Kx, then force on the spring divided by x is equal to k. So gosh, I can just look at my graph and say, uh, I'm going to pick the biggest numbers because that's always the best way. Um, 8 newtons, and that corresponds with 0.4 meters. So it's only worth a point, so it really doesn't need to see the work. So 8 newtons divided by 0.4 meters gives me 20. I knew that, but I'm showing you how to do that. 20, and then units would be newtons per meter. So let's give that a try. Let's go find our answer sheet. And I'll look at this. Huh? Huh? There it is. The units are already there. 20 is the number, and newtons per meter is the unit. It's always great to know that the answer, and then find that uh, you get a little bit of help there. Okay. I bet you I know what they're going to ask you for two points. Calculate the energy stored in the spring when the elongation is 0.3 meters. Show all your work, including the equation of substitution with units. All right, well, um, elongation is x, and that's equal to 0.3 meters. Now, let's see, potential energy in a spring is 1 half kx squared. 1 half kx squared. So potential energy in a spring is 1 half kx squared. We just found k in the previous problem, which is kind of why they, they had you do that, 20 newtons per meter. And so I can find potential energy that way. And in fact, the potential energy in the spring would be equal to 1 half of 20 newtons per meter times 0.3 meters squared. We'll lose one of the meters and have newton meters, which is be joules, so that'll work good. And um, so now we're just going to multiply and don't forget to square the point 0.3. And so I'm going to say uh, 20, I've got it on my calculator already, times 0.3 squared. I got 1.8. I'm going to say the potential energy is equal to 1.8 joules. Now, a little-known fact is work on a, on a force distance graph is the area under the graph. Work is force times distance. So the work on this spring, and the, therefore the energy stored in it, is equal to force times distance. So uh, watch this. It's one-half of 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, 4, 8, so that would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so 4, 5, 6. This would be 6 newtons. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. This is 0.3. So I could find this a different way. I could find the area under this graph if I wanted it to be really tricky. And I could say that my, my work done was also equal to the potential energy stored into it. So I could say my potential energy was equal to half of force times distance. And uh, so my force here would be 6 newtons 
my distance would be 0.3 meters. And so uh, uh, I could say my potential energy was equal to, I want to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 6 newtons times 3 meters divided by 2, 0.3 meters divided by 2. And get my calculator out and say, let's see, 6 times 0.3 um, divided by 2 gives me 0.9. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. 0.9 joules, which is different than the answer I got here because guess what I forgot to do over here? Huh? I forgot to take one half of it. See? See, I'm thinking I'm being fancy and I'm not. <laughs> That's a phone call. Hello. How are you? Great. I'm doing great. I'm recording a video even as we speak. Eh? Huh? Huh? Did you see what I did? I caught my mistake because I checked it a different way. That's such a good technique. Good thing. All right. I'm going to leave that mistake in too, by the way. Okay, let's go to question 54 and 55. Calculate the time required for a 6,000 Newton per net force to stop a 1,200 kilogram car initially traveling at 10 meters per second. Show all work. All right, well, let's see. What do I have here? I've got um, a force of 6,000 Newtons. I've got a mass of 0, 120 kilograms. I've got a velocity initial of 10 meters per second. I've got a velocity final of 0 meters per second. And I'm looking at time. So, uh, and I'm stopping something. So I'm thinking this is going to be an impulse type of question. They're looking for time. So let's go see if I got any formulas that got time, mass, and force, and stuff like that. And um, oh, look at this. It's called impulse is force times time, and it causes a change in momentum. You see that? And momentum is mass times velocity. So mass times change in velocity changes, it turns into change in momentum. So I can write this equation right here. I can write force times time, impulse, is equal to a change in momentum. I can write force times time, impulse, is equal to mass times change in velocity. And my change in velocity is going to be 10 meters per second as well, because it's going from 10 to 0. So I can write this equation. And I'm looking for time, so I can divide by force. Say time is equal to m delta v over uh, f. So I can write uh, 1,200 kilograms times... 10 meters per second uh, divided by 6,000 newtons, which would be uh, 6,000 kilogram meters per second squared. A little algebra trick there. Hope you caught that. And then let's see. Well, I'm writing sideways now. So let's see. My time is equal to, uh, well, it's going to be what? Add a zero to that. Looks like uh, two seconds, 20 seconds, one or the other. Oh, my batteries are low on my calculator. Okay, one, two, zero, zero times 10 divided by six, zero, zero, zero. And sure enough, I get two. And kilograms cancel out, meters cancel out, one set of seconds cancel out. I'm left with seconds. Two seconds is my answer. And that is the first part of uh, that page, whatever that page was. All right. Good luck.